The Ford Fiesta is one of the world's most selling cars and however you define it, 7th or 8th generation, this one here is the all new generation we're going to show you here today on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. Where's Thomas? We're going to take a detailed look on the exterior, the new face, the interior, a lot of has been done right there and of course the driving experience with the turbo petrol engine here today and also talking about colors and we'll also show you some of the vintage Fiesta and everything of that let's have a great Fiesta a party in full HD full screen and full length let's go So the biggest change is this new fish mowl, inspired by Aston Martin design, we have talked about it several times, but it is now in line with all the other new Ford models. This one here is the titanium trim level, so you have this shiny chrome grille, looks pretty fancy, I think um, very elegant and beautiful. Then the front hood is split, you can see it right there, brings down insurance costs, it's you know, better in a small crash. And the taillights are now more horizontally drawn, so have a modern, fresh look. This color here, by the way, is called Lagoon and definitely a very fancy color. Brings so much joy. Reminds me a little bit of the Miami Blue from the Porsche Cayman or from the Porsche Boxster. If it's 7th or 8th generation, by the way, well, it depends on the literature. UK rather says 7th because, you know, one of the generations they say, ah, it was just a facelift. In Germany, you rather say 8th generation. Well. Decide for yourself, this is the all new one. 4 meters 4 or 13 foot 2 is the total length of the all new Ford Fiesta. Starts with 15 inch rims, those ones are 17 inch in the titanium trim. The ST line also has 17 inch, goes up to 18 in the Vignale and probably also in the true ST later on. Here again, you can take a good look at the Lagoon color really lovely color this one is just an um, advertisement wrap you can just ignore that in general a rather conservative design you see a designer in the height of the door handles they're pretty thick by the way also available with keyless entry and prices just an overview taking german prices as reference 13,000 euros up to 22 23,000 euros then in the highest trims and this one here is about 20,000 euros with the equipment we have also titanium trim and some more extras on the inside soon more to that i want to hear you guys what you think about the design of the new fiesta interesting to know by the way drum brakes here in the rear but including and up to 100 horsepower drum brakes in the rear more than 100 horsepower then you get also disc brakes in the rear. The new Fiesta generation is 7 centimeters longer and ends right here with a little 3D effect in the taillights in the higher trims. It's also with LED technology and you see it's overlapping here just a little bit. And the car has become a little bit wider, just a little notch. In general, also not too much different in the rear than the previous generation. You have to remind this car is supposed to be selling worldwide and then you also don't put too much of a revolution to a vehicle. And we take a very short trip to the past with the first generation of the Fiesta here in this very angular look. Also take a look and remember the headlights how they have changed throughout the generations. We do not have all generations on stage but here for example the third generation this one has this rally sporty look still very angular very very masculine I think. And then we also have the Generation 6, which more had this van style, also with the very tall headlights in the front. Design-wise, probably one generation that was not really loved very much. And then we have the 8 one today, you can see right there. <laughs> The 
this is the car key and as I said earlier the door handles are really massive solid and this gives a good quality impression also the door closing sound is quite nice then inside of the doors what do we have here first of all pretty shallow for bottles and stuff then on the upper part we have some fabric here this is hard plastic and the upper part here too so no, no nothing softened up they've worked a little on the buttons here too and automatic windows for both of the windows here but you cannot control the back windows from here then take a look inside this is the titanium trim level so one of the higher trim levels for sure and titanium and st line come with sport seats that means a little bit more side support here and they have a great fabric design here with white contrast stitches and stuff so i really like it also the seat form itself looks pretty comfortable also the the steering wheel interesting it's rather thick and soft also interesting sporty idea so also the titanium level goes in a sporty direction the st line however is even a little bit sportier and you can see we got shiny black elements i don't favor them too much because they leave fingerprints and are also prone to scratches but what we can already see right here they have really worked on the interior it looks it looks better in the quality processing just from the visual perspective at first sight than the previous generation seating position is really sporty even more supported by the sports seats here and the steering wheel also pretty shallow the side to the front and you immediately feel like hey I mean, let's go driving this is surely sporty fun to drive however um, the long-term qualities may be in question then I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 and it leaves pretty, of, pretty much of headroom here and also in this titanium trim we got the bright ceiling from the inside and I think this works very well with, the, um, with this turquoise exterior color then the contrast with the bright and brings so much light in the interior here probably as you see it here right now today if I would go for Ford Fiesta it would be exactly like this the new cockpit overview interesting that on the top of the dashboard they use a little uh, softened plastic infotainment system 6.5 or as it is here right now the newer one the 8 inch the biggest one that is included right here in the titanium level interesting that it it comes a little bit out of the dashboard so although it's standing upright a little bit i think it is let's say half seamly integrated why not and then some horizontal stress right there over the right side but it's more you know that the infotainment system makes this uh, new quality impression and soon also more to the instruments um, because they are half digital you can really see that when you turn off and on the ignition and you might also have noticed this one is the petrol engine which is also available with the automatic gearbox and therefore you also have an automatic gear shifting lever instruments really interesting because it looks really flat and they almost look all digital but then you can see yeah that's a display and i mean the lower part also looks digital but if you turn on the ignition you see everything is analog with nice blue arrows there just the upper part the small screen is digital for example for a digital speedometer or for consumption and stuff the new 8 inch infotainment screen the biggest one that is available you can connect your phone via bluetooth but you can also go for the apple carplay or android auto cable connection then and then for example use the gps there because the gps from the car you have to buy it optionally it's not included in this very vehicle but i'm always happy to have the you know the choice that we have sometimes vehicle which do not have everything fully spec so i'm totally fine by that at the moment if you want inbuilt gps you can go for it but then you can also use the new smartphone mirroring functions and maybe just use your own gps the reaction times here by the way looks pretty good also you can you know scroll in here this was really needed that they updated this and finally we have a modern infotainment system then if we take a look further down the climate control well also the volume knob in, knob in the top part also here is some rubber part around it and this will wear out over the years if you hold the car a little bit longer you can still everything control manually also like where the vents are coming from seat heating optionally available 
then as a 12 volt power supply as well as one USB plug in the front. Some storage space in front of the gear shifter. This one here then easy styling. Just put it down. There's no old step mechanism or something like that. I really like that. We still have a manual handbrake. I mean, this car is also used in world rally racing. So that's probably the reason, isn't it? <laughs> Two cup holders, they are adaptive now. So you can put different bottle sizes in there. And then the leatherette cover of the armrest. The armrest itself could be a little bit more attached. You can see it right here. You can wobble around with it a little bit. Then some space inside there and a second USB charger that is really helpful. And I think two USB charger for a small vehicle. I think we can be okay with that. So let's get in the rear. The door doesn't open too wide. You can see here there's the child safety lock. You have to activate it with a screwdriver. It's not you know easy to do it on your own, but then again, your children can also not unlock it. See here the five door version. There is still a three door version from the Fiesta in the new generation, whereas other manufacturers reduce it to a five door version. Interesting solution or interesting approach they have here. What do you, do you think actually? Then let's get inside. And I got the seat as I would be driving and that doesn't leave too much knee room. I exactly fit in here, but I already touch uh, the, the front seat with my knees. Again, you know, probably four people with 170 meters or five foot eight, that would still work. Headroom wise, it does exactly fit with my 180, 60 meters or six foot one. Um, but here the knee room, so it's not the best package we've seen here in the small car segment. Some other vehicles we had lately, for example, you know, um, new Seat Ibiza, or also if you think about um, a Honda Jazz, they had a better package here um, as for the, the rear space. If you don't have so long legs, um, it's a reasonable, comfortable here. And again, the headroom, um, that one is uh, actually quite nice. And you can also flip the seats. You have to press the button here and then you just flip it right from here with a two-third, one-third split. There we go. And better we can take a look at it, of course, from the rear. Top tether on the back side and there are ESO fix anchors on the outer seat parts. And here, Kalahari Brown, by the way, another color, a <laughs> very interesting color. But what I want to show you is the door protector. It's an optional feature. You already know it maybe from the Ford Focus and here it is mechanical so see it goes in and out and really protects the door if you are now in a narrow parking lot or so that you don't have then you know paint against paint but rubber against paint pretty handy solution and also available for the rear doors let's move over here and here we go so and you can repeat it over and over again well, and you see in, in the front, it looks a little bit more flawless from the mechanism. Do you see that here? Plop, <laughs> like this, plop. But I mean, it's also okay for the rear, but in the front, as I said, it looks a little bit better. But overall, I think, clever solution to offer something like this. And let's take a look under the hatch. Here we go. Well, it's a relatively high loading sill and it goes way down there, but of course you do not waste any space then. And then you could also fit a replacement tire if you would like so. To flip the seats, well, you have to reach over right there and then have a one third, two third split, as explained. Here we go. And you do have a step right there. Other vehicles have a solution where they have an underfloor. I mean, it's the question, which is really better. Um, you can get the back parts here a little bit flatter if you move the head restraints up then they go a little bit lower, as you can see it here. And now let's take a look at different trim levels, exterior and interior. This one here is the base model. First of all, a very beautiful blue color, I think. But even more interesting that this is really one of the cheapest ones you can get. It's a three door and here in the basic trim you see it's also just a black plastic front grille. But still it looks already elegant with the chrome frame around. So basically 
why not? Here you can also see how the car looks with the standard 15 inch steel tires or steel wheels. You see them behind, and then there's just a, um, a plastic cap above it. So this is the very basic model then. Also, we have the basic interior here. That's really interesting. You can see the three door setup. You can also open the door and you can see it. Here we go. You see there's no door there. And let's give you some light here also in the interior. Those ones are also the basic seats. Also the steering wheel is, um, you see, right there. But already, you know, with some graphics, contrast graphics, things very well done. Uh, the contrast to the sports seats here, you don't have so much show of support, but then again, you have a little bit more space. The steering wheel is also a little bit simpler, has no animal skin wrap. I think that's also perfectly fine. Soon more to the infotainment system. Here you can see, and you can flip the seat and slide it forward. That's how it looks like right there. Of course, it's, you know, doesn't change anything of the knee room, but it's of course handier to get in the five door one. This one is the basic infotainment system, so no option at all. You see there's just a small screen for radio, but you can already connect your phone via Bluetooth, so the basic function is given. So a trimmer will be above that, cool and connect. This one here, 16 inch and already aluminum wheels. Also Kalahari brown color, we've seen that earlier. The blue one was Indic blue. And here you can also see the five door then again, 800 euros extra for the five door variant. And then interior, it's already a little bit different. You see it's basically the same seats. A little bit different is the infotainment system. So in here, this is the 6.5 inch screen. So you can see the basic outline is the same then with the 8 inch, but the inside then is a little bit different, a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, this car is already run out of battery because it's a show car that's standing here for quite a long time, but I think you got the idea. Here again, back to our titanium trim level. You can see here again the difference with those chrome horizontal front grille fins. I think very beautiful version of, I, I think it's my favorite one. And here in ruby red. Here you can also see the optional panoramic roof right there when it's open from the outside. Pretty interesting structure, of course, but even more important is of course what it looks like from the inside and wing for a small vehicle, it's actually quite wide the opening, so if you want to have some more fresh air. The sporty Visual King is the ST line. You can see there's a shiny black grille and a honeycomb structure, more aggressive. Here you can also see, as yes, it's, it's not so light here, the LED signature that comes with those headlights. I think also beautifully done. Also, the ST line features stronger lower bumpers, as you can see it right now, in vehicle color. And this one here is a matte red tone. And also featuring top of the line 18 inch rims. And the interior featuring red contrasts, here fabric on the inside with sports seats. However, on the outside, they do use genuine animal skin. I'm not sure why. It's really not necessary. They could have used leather red here, but the idea of the seat is of course a good one. And other red sporty elements in this interior, pretty attractive also this ST line then. And let me just make it a little bit darker, especially around the cup holders for example, you can see how the ambient lighting is taking place in this vehicle, just a little bit. And just to compare again, here the eight inch screen we had earlier here, there are less bars around it than with the 6.5. And finally, the Vignale trim. This one features another special front grille structure. In general, this Vignale idea, I'm not really sure what I should think about it because here, for example, a Fiesta is about, in Germany, 24,000 euros. I think it doesn't make any sense. And in general, the Vignale strategy at Ford is Let's put some chrome on the outside and let's put animal skin on the inside and then sell it for double the price. 
Um, I'm not sure, I think that's rather fooling the customer. And there it is, the interior. I mean, I talked about the concept. The styling, there are some very nice ideas. However, also the structure on the seat, I mean, it looks good, but it won't be comfortable on the long-term run. We've experienced it also with the same structure with Audi seats, and um, it's really more comfortable when you have an even seating surface. So under the hood, there's either a 1.5 liter diesel with 85 horsepower or 120 horsepower. And then petrol engines here also today, there's a 1.1 liter naturally aspirated with 70 or 85 horsepower. Then the one we have today here, one liter EcoBoost, the turbo petrol with 100 horsepower. Exactly this one. This one can also be combined with the automatic gearbox. But then with manual also 125 or 140 horsepower available and the ST will receive a 1.5 liter EcoBoost with then 200 horsepower. This one will be the true racing machine. But here today, this is an engine I would probably recommend in a normal Ford Fiesta for everyday using. And of course, for lazy shifting people, yeah, the automatic gearbox is the big advantage of this horsepower version. Let's start with the driving part and the thing I want to show you first is how to park in and especially with this light steering and the automatic and the rear view camera we have right here. So, and this is especially good with the automatic, I just put it in reverse and then have the rear view camera with those helping lines. I can exactly see where I am steering at and so I can very well fit this car into the box. So this is really easy with that vehicle. Um, Without the rear view camera, well, it's a small car, yes, but you know, the overview due to the raising window line is not the best. So it's of course nice to have a rear view camera, but it's also optional in price then. And also getting out, you see the steering wheel is really light. So it's really easy to ease this car around the parking lot. And what I've said in the interior part is, um, it's also confirmed here. The thing is, it feels really sporty in this vehicle and is rather narrow. So I'm not exactly sure if it's the best vehicle for tall people on the long-term run, just from position-wise. But I can already tell you so far, it is really a lot of fun. <laughs> So, brakes are also applying very well. I mean, if some of you guys maybe say, ah, oh, you know, with the drum brakes in the rear, but it's really fine. Then, as I said earlier, one liter petrol engine, turbo with 100 horsepower. And it's the very first time ever I have driven a Ford Fiesta with an automatic gearbox. So that's also, also why I intended to go for that one. It's, you know, special setup here for sure and really interesting. And the automatic gearbox, if I'm just applying a little throttle, it's shifting really smoothly, you hardly feel the transition. And of course, it's really relaxing. I mean, I do, sh I, I wouldn't say I'm a lazy shifter. I do shift a lot, but I don't want to be a shifter. Let's take it that way. So when I have a manual car, I do use all the gears, but I usually prefer automatic gearbox because you can keep your hands at the steam all the time when you're not talking to some YouTube viewers. <laughs> Don't do it. Keep your hands at the steam all the time, not doing like this, blah, blah, blah. It's almost Italian, right? Um, do I look Italian? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> you know, my surname is formerly Polish some 200 years ago, but uh, maybe I can also be mistaken for Italian. I don't know. So our Italian viewers, please rate that. Let's get back to the vehicle. We got those sporty steering wheel here and the car feels really direct and sporty, yes. The suspension here in this normal 
or titanium trim. I mean, it's not a sport suspension, not at all. But as the car is pretty light, that was still yellow, right? That was the yellow. Let's just re re <laughs> repeat it and then we know it. So it's really a lot of fun and the vehicle is really more direct than the previous predecessor version. I think this is one of the biggest differences. There was one generation, I think it was generation four, I think generation four, that was also a, a very sporty one. I really liked that one. But this one here really feels more refined. Also sound insulation wise, this car is way more silent than the predecessor version. So the steering is light at the same time, but also sporty enough. The sportier suspension and feeling, which is not uncomfortable at all. So suspension wise, they also have improved. Um, for example, we start with a little rough road that doesn't, does feel less rough in this new generation here now than with the sound insulation. So indeed, all the small details have been refined here. In general, if you compare it to its competitors, yeah, you know, a lot of the competitor brands, they have made the cars a little bit bigger also. So I think they offer a little bit more room. We have seen that. So the package here also, you know, the console comes pretty far towards you. The package could be better, I think. Again, this is all relevant for you if you're rather a tall person. If you're not that tall, this might be not relevant at all. Let's stay in this roundabout here <laughs> behind this Kalahari Fiesta. Just one more time here, just in the roundabout. And it's so much fun with this vehicle. That is, I think, also uh, you know one of the one of the crucial points. Come on, let's, come on, let's do it one more time. Push it a little bit further. 40 kilometers an hour now. So really good what they have done here from the suspension setup and steering and so on. And it fits also to the seating position they have. Really nice. And if you want it even sportier, of course, then you would in the end go for the real ST. Of course, then the price is also higher. What about the performance of this very engine? Let's see, you know, there's no one behind us, no one in front of us. Like a normal acceleration on a countryside road, for example, if we have some 40 kilometers to 70, which is loud here, let's go. Bam. Plop. There we go. You see, that's reasonable in the speed. This one liter of displacement is enough also with the turbo. Sound-wise, also not too bad either. If you want to boost it a little bit, you can, for example, use the shifting pedals, small shifting pedals, and then go back manual, third gear, for example, now, apply the throttle, shift up, or what is also possible, there's the S mode, the sport mode, and this makes sense with the automatic, because then the gears, you can still use the shifting pedals then, the S. And then in the S mode, you see car shifted down one gear, so shifting down earlier and shifting up later. So you keep it in the higher RPM regions with the S mode. Um, usually you would just go in a comfort, in a D mode, stay like that. But if you want a little bit more RPM, another Fiesta coming right there, then it can really make sense to have this S mode. Maybe, you know, if you plan on some overtaking and say, I really want the, the maximum boost that is available. The sound insulation, even at um, some higher speeds, is still very good. So this is also, you know, one of the key findings with the new generation. From the visual aspect, if you look to the front, also with this small window there in the front, sometimes you can think, yeah, I'm still in the previous one. Then again, if you hear the sound and um, then check out the improved sportiness, for example, then you know you are in the new generation. I also like the new small digital gauges we have in the front there that makes it easier to follow the speed. It's also placed relatively high in your uh, line of sight. 
then you directly know at which speed you are and then you can also avoid speeding for example there's also a cruise control we can set it's an adaptive one you can get that one optional that of course makes sense in combination especially with the automatic gearbox so let's set that now and then you can just let the car run pretty useful and I hope we'll soon get to a situation maybe where the speed is also being reduced and we can test if it really goes until zero you know with manual gearbox cars this can be a hard thing to do because at some point the engine would stall so then the ACC automatic gearbox would be the best combination you know <laughs> there's another Calari Fiesta facing us no. some other journalists driving this car here today too you see here I'm behind this Fiat Ducato now the speed has been reduced a little bit now the speed is increased again so this ACC is working pretty smoothly so overall also a very good result let's check the overview again well I see the cars behind me very well it's no problem the side mirrors are not that huge they're actually pretty small so could be a better overview there and again as I said to the side it's reasonably okay but there are also other vehicles with a better look around what can I conclude to the engine so first of all the automatic gearbox I'm really satisfied with it now the ACC oh wow cancelled hmm that's not too good we were about 50 kilometers and then the ACC cancelled so good that we had this test now and I have to say it's not the best result now let's accelerate from 50 to yeah this one guy was going further let's go to the S mode are we on the S mode and then 55 to 70 So, good performance, the somehow Golf 4 Tune GTI, something behind us is also gone now then, <laughs> trying to catch up. Good performance, so this 100 horsepower is definitely not enough and again, as I said earlier, I can just prove it by the driving part. I really like the combination of this 100 horsepower engine with the automatic gearbox would be my dream setup for the Fiesta here. I mean, if it's, you know, not the very sporty version, but I mean, for everyday driving, for overall owning this vehicle, now in a harder corner, yeah, I mean, suspension is soft, but this is also what you would expect for the everyday driving life. So overall, I mean, this vehicle, I think they've really done a good job. We had some things in the interior part, which could have been done a little bit better. Driving wise, I think in all of the different characteristics and elements you could choose. Pretty convincing vehicle and especially notable that they have improved every single minor detail if you compare it to the previous generation. I think that's um, it's not a completely new new car in a sense of you would feel that's not my Ford Fiesta if you own the predecessor version. But you definitely know it will be a better Ford Fiesta than the previous one. And now to our conclusion, the all-new Ford Fiesta new generation. A refreshing exterior, definitely a sporty but yet elegant look, especially in the titanium trim level. The interior, really refined in a lot of different elements. Finally, also the possibility to go for a modern touch infotainment system that was utterly needed. I think it's also very well done. I also like the seat layout we have seen here today with the sport seats in the titanium trim. The package could be a little bit better. That is one point I could criticize. So I would like to see more room in the rear bench. Then driving wise, also every single element has been refined. The setup we had here today with the 100 horsepower and the automatic 
was a very good one. Great shifting from the automatic. Still with 100 all horsepower you already have plenty of power for this small vehicle. From the driving, good comfort, still really sporty a ride. So it doesn't look that sporty, but it is driving wise really a quite sporty approach. So I think really all of the different single elements of the driving part were pretty promising. Also that they've worked on the sound insulation. So this is overall a big step forward for sure. So I'm quite sure about 17 million sales so far of the Ford Fiesta worldwide. The success story will continue. It's not a groundbreaking new concept. There will be CNG engines. Not sure yet if it will be in Germany, but for sure, for example, in Italy, the main CNG market. No sign of hybridization yet. So overall, still a rather conservative concept. You still get the three-door version also if you want it, but every single element of this vehicle has been evolutionized, refined. And I think especially the existing Ford Fiesta customers will be very satisfied with the new generation. Want to hear your feedback now about this vehicle? Put it all below in the comments and also see you at the next Autogefühl episode.